Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and we appreciate you making us a part of your day because we're beginning a new series. In five parts, we're going to look at the authoritative source of our theology. And we know and we've learned that that is the Bible. But how does the Bible deal with our experiences or our culture or our backgrounds? These are things that we want to focus on to always make sure that the scriptures are a guide for what and who we are. But who we are never shapes what the scripture says to us. So let's start talking about experience. But before we do anything, we want to pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus, you would help us to see you through heaven's eyes and for us to see our lives as you see them. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Experience is where we're beginning today. And one of the things we want to make sure we understand is that in Jesus Christ, when we accept his grace and we receive God's love to salvation, that that experience or our past becomes our testimony. It becomes not just who we were, but this is who I was and what God is now doing with me right now. So with our experience becoming our testimony, we don't want to get rid of that. You can't. It's what you've been through. It's your past. But how is that shaped by the scriptures? Well, one verse gives us some light. In Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And so as a sinner saved by grace, now that we're in Christ, all that has happened in our life, it, it doesn't change what has happened, but the impact that it has and, and what it means to us now, it's different. It's the testimony. It's the test of what God's grace has allowed us to go through, what he's allowed us to overcome and what he has refused to let crush us to now be where we are today in him. So that's why experience is valuable. It's not just valuable, but it's essential to, to our story because that is our story. It's not just an AD experience after Jesus' death and our accepting of it, but even the BC, even the other side, it's important because it gives meaning to when we met Jesus and accepted him. Another one to consider is in Titus chapter three, verses four to five says, but after that, Focus on that. But after that, that the kindness and love of God, our savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. These verses together make a beautiful, beautiful reality. And that verse five focuses on what God's grace has done for us and what Jesus being in our life. And obviously the reading and living now by the word, the impact it's had. But those first few words where it says, but after that or after this, or what is the this and the that? That's our experience. It's how we've lived. It's, and it's what we've done, whether it was good or bad or, or somewhere in between. After all of that, this is now the work that the Lord is doing. So again, the experience now becoming our testimony. Remember though, it should never be the test of our faith. Remember what the Bible says in this verse. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse three, speaking about now the temptation and the fall of our great grandparents, Adam and Eve. Paul says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He was cautioning the church there at Corinth to avoid a sensory religion, but rather that they would have a scriptural faith that takes what they're going through and it always shapes it and it guides it. But it's not the experience guiding the word. Remember the subtlety that, that Satan used to use this serpent now to beguile Eve. And to get her to focus on what she saw more than what God said. And it was her trust in her experience that allowed her to get away from inspiration. And the Bible is very clear. It's very concrete. Remember, it's an anvil, not to oppress us, but it is what anchors us and keeps us from coming this mishmash. Well, I feel and you feel relative religion that now becomes all about us rather than about the one whom we're supposed to worship. The Bible keeps us in that point. And the Bible allows us to always have a faith that's resting on Christ's righteousness and never our own. 
And that's important because just like I wouldn't count on my righteousness to win me to God, the gospel good news and the power of the cross is that now I'm no longer relying even on the bad that I've done to keep me from Jesus any more than my good would get me to him. So with this in mind, that's why we need the Bible. And that's what I experienced. It's a beautiful testimony to what God has done and what God is continuing to do is what he promises to do in our future, no matter our experience.